What is going on, everybody? Paul here, coming at you with your Crypto Coffee update, where we start the day by discussing the news and upcoming events in the world of crypto, all while enjoying our fresh cup of coffee. In the spirit of Scott Adams, join me in a simultaneous sip. hot fresh cup of coffee to kick off the day right. All right, let's go ahead and get into the news. Now to build upon our last news bite, we're gonna continue the theme of psychological phenomena and keeping a level head in cryptocurrency. So to further highlight these phenomena like cognitive dissonance and selection bias, let's examine the recent selfish miner issue, a proposal that is fundamentally flawed for a few reasons and may even be a bit nefarious. The concept ignores some real-world economic incentives, yet the individuals who propose it are a bit discontented with their place in the perceived hierarchy being challenged as they move the goalpost pretty consistently. The fact that this subject was also recently picked up by the contentious Dr. Craig Wright, an individual whose name alone causes lamentation by some or celebration by others, further influences this stark polarization surrounding the issue. It's a really great example of selection and moralistic bias in crypto. Now I can already hear the slow ringing of people claiming that I'm a big blocker or a fake Satoshi lover, but the good news is I don't care. I just want facts. Facts are immune to ad hominem attacks and stand the test of time. As Galileo mumbled with his head hung low and facing the charges of heresy by the Catholic Church, nonetheless the earth does move. Even without those solemn words, the planet spun beneath all of their feet as it still turns under ours, so let's go ahead and get into the news of the day. The selfish miner fallacy is just that, false. So what it does is it asserts that a miner would achieve an economic benefit by maliciously discovering blocks early, and extrapolates from this assumption in a closed system. The argument put forth assumes that no honest miners would reject the manipulated blocks, it assumes a constant block difficulty, it doesn't account for energy or maintenance cost of the mining machines themselves, and it fails to accurately explore a true orphan block rate. Doesn't do any of that. Not only does this make no sense in real economics, but any actor attempting this feat just for the sake of maliciousness, forgetting all the money that they're bleeding out, would have to achieve around 51% of the network's hashing power for the attack to even be efficient. Uh, basically, all things considered, this vector of attack is not only fundamentally unprofitable up until a certain point, but it's beyond the 51% threshold and assumes that the only goal of the selfish miner realistically is to destroy the network since they're burning up all this money in the process. So that's really not that big of a problem. That's a legitimate vector of attack if that were the original paper's stated thesis. Apparently a gentleman by the name of Peter Rizun, Rizun? Uh, sorry if I got the pronunciation a little bit off, man, uh, proposed that selfish mining, or SM, was a threat to the Bitcoin ecosystem since the selfish miner, if left undetected, could essentially spoof blocks and take an unfair portion of the block reward. I say this was apparently proposed by Peter because I dug through the annals of Twitter to try and get you guys the best sources available and there's a lot of information on the subject. Craig Wright mentioned Peter as the individual who proposed the concept of selfish mining in this context, so we're going to go with it. However, I do apologize in advance to Peter uh, if this is attributed elsewhere. However, realistically, that really doesn't change the metrics therein, and it really doesn't alter any of the argumentation. My point today, what you see on your screen here is the pyramid of argumentation. When exchanging information with another person, you may find yourself at odds with one of their positions. At times like this, I implore you to consider this pyramid. Is what you're about to say near the bottom of the pyramid, will it really add to the conversation in the spirit of the pursuit of truth, or will it really just hurt the other person emotionally and maybe even poison what could have been an excellent mutually beneficial relationship, or maybe even friendship over the long term because of unnecessarily harsh words in the moment? If it's near the top of the pyramid, fantastic. Uh, look, I'm not the smartest dude on the block. I just love this stuff. I implore you to contact the author and raise your arguments in the rousing spirit of friendly public discourse in this subject and in any others. After all, back and forths on Twitter are enjoyable, but they often quickly devolve into fruitless ad hominem exchanges rather than true efforts of mental fortitude and interpersonal debate. My goal here today is to break the conditioning and foster more intellectually friendly relationships across the entirety of the world of crypto. Have I been sassy about some projects in the past? Absolutely, definitely, of course, you betcha, and that ain't changing. But as anyone who has met me or spoken to me on Discord or any other medium for that matter can tell you, I strive to be a level-headed individual focused on facts. Do I get hot-headed at times? 
Absolutely. But if I'm provably wrong, then I'm just wrong. I'm happy to be so, because realistically, you learn more when you're wrong than you do when you're right. It's just a bit more uncomfortable initially, but a whole lot more rewarding in the long term. So our final thoughts. It's easy to get wrapped up in these contentious and heady arguments, thinking that we're doing objective good for the wider community as a whole. After all, if a multi-million dollar company has economic incentives, it makes economic sense to use human psychology to get people to back up their cause in order to legitimize it in the eyes of the public. I'm not saying selfish mining is a closed case. I'm also certainly not saying that Craig Wright is infallible or that Peter Razoon is not a good person striving for objective truth. Oh look, we're all humans. We all slip up and do human things. However, if we lock arms, hold each other accountable, do our own research, and respectfully discuss the reality of each situation as it comes towards us, then we can kind of ebb down these moralistic crusades that we're beginning to see emerge in the crypto culture. I think it would be better for everyone. But let me know what you think below in the comments. Am I a hypocrite for this? Am I going a little too over the top? Am I, am I listening to too many Beatles albums and, and thinking that we're all in this together a bit too much? Let me know. What's your two cents? What's your two Satoshi? All right, let's go ahead and move into the Crypto Coffee update for Wednesday, April 11th. EU Blockchain Summit 2018 is kicking off in Slovenia with Ikonomi and co-founded, among others, attending. Bloomberg's Invest Asia conference is kicking off with Monaco, Roger Ver, and other attendees. Waves is having their second birthday meetup in Moscow. Descent is having a meetup in Dublin. Dragon Chain's having a meetup in Seattle. And Pillar is having a blockchain breakfast in London. Moving on to Thursday, April 12th, the second global fintech and blockchain summit 2018 is kicking off in Shanghai. Blockchain Delhi 2018 is sponsored by Stratus. And Blockchain Summit Seoul 2018 is happening in Korea. A lot of national blockchain summits happening. IOTA is having their code talks in Berlin. And ARK is hosting an open hackathon in Geneva, Switzerland. That's it for Thursday, April 12th, and for your Crypto Coffee update. As usual, links below in the description, along with the B-list coins. Just tokens that are kind of popular, but I didn't think they were really meritous of being on the main list since we focus mainly on the news. Let me know if you want to see any of those tokens bumped up to the main list since, like I said, this is as much your update as it is my update. You can help mold and change the history of Cryptide. You have the power! Anyway, like, share, subscribe, drop me some comments, talk to me on Discord. Love you guys. Talk to you next time.